everyone, welcome to another episode of the Jazz Transcription Clinic Live. Today I have tried something a bit different, more complex. That's why my uh, a little bit longer silence on the live episodes. Uh, because today I'm going to talk and uh, work and analyze a track, a complete track from a video played by a Belevens uh, sextet that he recorded in 1958 and the track is called Stratus Funk which is a composition by George Russell. Now I decided to transcribe this one uh, because I did a transcription of the track in the original recording of George Russell which is this recording here, fantastic recording uh, by George Russell in uh, 1960. But this video that I'm going to work on today is from 1958 and is played by Bill Evans who was a good friend of George Russell. So George Russell was an American uh, composer, uh, musically born as a drummer and then switched to piano. And this recording here is his first recording as a pianist and composer, of course. Uh, the title is uh, fantastic and captivating, Stratus Funk, which is a combination uh, of two words, but the spelling is not exactly uh, right. So Stratus uh, indicates and is referred to some cumuli, some clouds that you can find close to the uh, stratosphere and uh, funk of course is referred to a complexity in rhythm. So George Russell was uh, one of those composers and musicians that uh, started to uh, do things differently. So in the period where all the musicians, all the jazz musicians were still working intensively on standards and uh, normal chord progressions, uh, George Russell started to dictate a new way to approach improvisation and jazz improvisation. So taking uh, all the vocabulary from the so-called normal jazz and so all normal chord progressions po uh, chord progressions taken out from famous songs uh, from the American songbook and he started doing something different so he's one of the first composers who started to work on motives and ideas and in many interviews, he also stated that he's more interested in to making it work, making the idea work rather than play the right note on the right chord. And this piece in particular is a perfect example of a blues. So Stratus Funk is a blues, blues in F. And it's just great that um, you can hear uh, his attempt of creating a melody that is not quite a melody in F dominant or in on a blues in F. And also the, the chords are a little bit different. And the other peculiarity is that when I transcribed the original track, I had to transcribe the whole bass line because the bass line is based on, I would say, almost random notes, uh, mocking a walking bass, uh, but they sound fantastic. The combination of the melody and the bass line, which is the opening of the track, is it sounds so cool. And you can tell, of course, that is a blues, uh, but there is still the macro structure of the blues, so 4-4-4, four, four, and four. and the, that indication, that clue is giving you the idea of the blues even though uh, when you analyze you know, this bass line here uh, with a melody uh, you wouldn't tell that is a blues in F. Uh, so uh, doing a little bit of uh, research and more reading off the liner notes of the original album, 
there is written that Stratus Funk in, addic in addiction, sorry, there is written that Stratus Funk, in addition to being a strikingly unusual word coined by George Russell as a title for one of his compositions, can also serve as a particularly apt description of all the music played by Russell's newly formed sextet on its first Riverside album. Stratus pertains to a wide cloud formation and carries a clearly implied suggestion of the far-out stratosphere, while funk is of course merely a variation of our old friend funk referring to the presence of an earthy down-home blues feeling. This is in essence is what Russell's music is, a fascinating fusion of old and new elements. And uh, quotes, any valid new movement in jazz, Russell insists, must be firmly rooted in the past. When those roots are plainly identifiable, the music is all the more exciting because it's new and old at the same time. And this is fantastic. And then there is another uh, paragraph that is uh, quite uh, nice, which is this one. Because in, in this original recording, which is not the track that we will analyze today, but in this original recording by George Russell, the band comprises Dave Baker on trombone, Dave Young on tenor saxophone, Al Kiger on trumpet, uh, Chuck Israels on bass, and Joe Hunt on drums, and of course George Russell on piano. Now, all those uh, musicians were George Russell's students at the university where George Russell was teaching, and all of them will develop their own career. Dave Becker, the trombonist, is also famous for having written the famous books, How to Play Bebop. Fantastic books. Maybe one day I will make an episode on those books. But there is this paragraph saying, in describing their playing of those musicians, Russell emphasizes that, quotes, all the soloists share what I consider a very important approach to contemporary jazz, an awareness that you can play on the idea, not necessarily just on the dictated chords. There are really no right or wrong notes. What counts is whether or not you are successful in bringing it off. And guys, 1960, and he was already teaching those concepts, so he was pretty advanced. Now, this version uh, is a bit shorter, and I, I had a lot of fun of analyzing and transcribing everything, and I tried to transcribe you know, everything, the melody, the harmonization, and then the three solos. There is first a trombone solo by Jimmy Cleveland, and then there is a trumpet solo by a young art farmer here. And the solo form is also uh, fun because uh, there are <clears throat> eight bars that they start without the drums and then one chorus of a blues. In the original is a little bit different and I will talk a little bit more about that and then the final solo is beloved solo and believe me i had a hard time transcribing also the left hand uh, as a saxophone player i always struggle to get the right notes but luckily and thankfully to uh, uncle bill he played a very simple voicings uh, on the left hand and then there is a short head out and the video fade out. So, uh, without any further ado, I will start playing the track. And I will play the entire track and then I will talk a little bit about it. Let's go. Stratus Funk, George Russell. Guys, remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Like the video and support my channel. It will be much appreciated and it will motivate me to keep going with those transcriptions. So let's have a listen to George Russell Strassus Funk played by Bill Levins Sextet in 1958. <laughs> Thank you. 
Fantastic, isn't it? And uh, what I like about this track is that um, in comparison to the original, it is very, very similar, even when Belevens play the melody. So this is the voicings that uh, George Russell will be playing. So it's all written, uh, even the piano part, right? Because it's exactly the same in this recording. And uh, what I like is the fact that there are those two contrasting parts here. Uh, this melody, which is pretty, you know, angular, and there are those voicing reminding us, you know, the, the triton between F7 and C7, and then B flat 7 and F7 again, which are giving us the sound of the blues right the blues is planted and is implanted on those three chords f7 b flat 7 and c7 so the seeds and the connection with the blues is in those voicings but the melody and the bass as i said are far away from being a clear blues in f and the whole result is is just exceptional and i can hear a lot of things coming up you know, a lot of the Kilevens sounds are already in this part here. I want to mention that uh, I wrote here, there is a clear cut in the uh, TV recording, probably for length issues. They made several cuts uh, throughout here. So it's funny that they adjusted the melody to be 12 bars, but actually... You know, the melody starts from bar one of a cycle of 12 and the first chorus is just the bass line, right? So they cut the first chorus and they cut it here, which is a funny uh, place. And then there are only the last eight bars of the actual melody. The melody is full 12 bars like at the end. But let's have a listen to the melody when everyone comes in. Right, 
Right. So you can hear the three blocks typical from the blues. And then second block. Which, you know, is explained in that little paragraph that I just read before. George Russell won you to hear and stick to the idea, not necessarily the right note. You know, if you think of the chords of a blues, there is F7 on the first bar and the first note is D flat. Uh, and then there is B flat 7 on the second bar and there is E flat, E natural, E flat. And then resolving on D flat. But once you start listening to the melody a couple of times, it makes perfectly full sense because uh, the idea is what dominates here. So let's have another listen and please pay attention to the three blocks of four bars. Second block. Last block. And I can hear that probably the only clue that we have here is that the first voicing played by the piano is a voicing over F dominant. And then on bar five of the melody, there is a voicing on B flat dominant. But that is enough, you know, together with a strong idea in the melody, that is enough to make us hearing a blues. Fantastic. I find it fantastic. And then there is this little interlude of eight bars before the trombone solo starts. Again, guys, this is based on counterpoint. There are only two lines here. And then there is another line going on from here. Which is basically a chromatic scale going up and resolving on B flat. But the sound that he creates with just two lines and, and uh, uh, clashing harmonization, I would say, is really, really fantastic. Listen to the bass. Again. solo plays the blues and then there is a very simple background Another interlude. Trumpet solo. Very modern, whole tone scale. And he's back into the blues. Right, so Art Farmer solo, uh, the trombonist is Jimmy Cleveland, playing a fantastic, you know, and virtuosistic 
solo. Quite conventional, you know, a few ideas, repeated riff. Uh, Art Farmer is way more modern than that. He tries, you know, new tools, whole tone scale. He goes out of the harmony and then goes back to the uh, blues, but with some, you know, modern concept. He uses the Lydian dominant on the four chord on B flat seven. He uses uh, Lydian dominant B flat sky scale, this one. Ah, fantastic. Uh, and then he has all the bebop tools like enclosures, you know, fully employed here. And then uh, the blue scale, of course, and then alter it, alter it scale or you know, very close to the diminished. Right? With both the nines on that chord. That's great. And then there is a fantastic, very reflective and calm and beautifully played uh, piano solo by Bill Evans. I love this idea, you know, the last four bars resolving on just the tonic, but the rhythm that he plays is so good. Right? Listen to this phrase. You can't play the blues better than this. Those three notes, I should call it this B natural C flat, you know, in the blue scale. Oh, I love this scale. It's a weird scale. It's almost, you know, a combination of C blues and F blues. Uh, it's, it's, it's great, great sound. This is a F blues scale, right? That's great. So guys, this is the end of our episode of today. Stratus Funk by George Russell, played by Bill Levens Sextet. So I hope you enjoyed this show. Please remember to subscribe and like this video and support this channel. Guys, see you again soon for another great transcription. Bye.